This is Twit. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of, well, cell phones and smart, I mean, smartphones by extension, but really, I mean, when we think about a technology that has really kind of become so engulfed uh, around what we do mm -hmm. on a regular basis here in the U.S., around the world, business is driven by it, personal lives are driven by it. I mean, the cell phone is incredibly important, uh, to say the least. And the way that it's developed since it began, it's just really fascinating to me to, to uh, get the opportunity to talk to someone who was really there in the beginning, Stu Tartarone was one of the engineers on the team at AT&T 40 years ago that helped develop the technology, the under te underlying technology of the first cell phone call. Wow. And I believe even has has some uh, some props to show off as well. But Stu, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> taking the time to talk with us today about this. It's amazing to meet you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you guys. And thank you for joining us here today in Middletown, New Jersey. All right on. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful to get you on here and, and talk mm. to you about the history of something that we I think it's easy to take for granted. And I'm super excited and super interested to hear kind of your take, which we'll get to in a little bit about the progress, if we want to call it that, or kind of the development of the technology that you helped design and and launch 40 years ago. But let's let's kind of start in the beginning um, and talk about what you were working on exactly, you know, well, 40, 41 years ago. Mm -hmm. When you were hired by AT&T, what were you tasked with exactly? How did that materialize um, into, you know, what we have today, I suppose? So I came to join a small team, but it was actually back in 1972, which is probably a little over 50 years ago, uh, at Bell Labs, which has now evolved to AT&T Labs, yeah. uh, to conceive the first cellular system. It's something that didn't exist before. And think about coming out of grad school, uh, coming into working on something that no one saw before, no one touched. Uh, and being foisted into this incredible team uh, to, to, to develop and evolve it. So the first real job that I was given was to work on a market survey to understand if there was a market for this type of communication, which was initially focused on in a vehicle, not, not a handheld. Wow. Uh, and uh, it was oriented more toward businesses. So we went out and we did a very professional market survey, hire the market research company to do it, questionnaires, live interviews, got to sit on the other side of the glass. And as a result of it, uh, the conclusion was that there was no market for this type of technology back in <laughs> wow. 1973. Okay, so no market back in 1973. And yet... The decision was to kind of move forward with it. What, like, what was the rationale there? Like, I imagine with these market studies, you know, you want to know, like, is is there juice worth worth squeezing for? Like, is there a there there? Like, how did how did that transpire? Well, you know, this is part of what we've always done at AT and T. You know, think about the transistor, information theory, charge coupled devices, solar you know, solar cells. These are things that we thought would be important, significant for the evolution of communications. So we were fortunate to be able to move forward with it, understanding that, yeah, well, maybe no one saw a market today, but we really thought there was a huge opportunity moving forward. And fortunately, we had the support of our company to do that. Yeah, no kidding. And the, and the foundation uh, around it and um and I mean, clearly, like I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, things went the way they did because I couldn't <laughs> imagine our lives yeah. <laughs> you know, without that. It's so foundational, uh, fundamental to what we do. Who exactly was this technology envisioned for at that time? Like you mm -hmm. said, it would it would be in the vehicle. Is this I mean, really, I, I imagine the answer is is business uh, folk. Were, were they a even asking for something like this? Well, nobody was really asking for it. And you know what I think it boils down to? Sometimes people can't ask for something they don't see, they don't yeah. know. Yeah, In true. fact, 
the result of that market survey said people were very interested in, in more pagers and more modern technology pagers. So that was the in technology at the time to communicate with people when they were distant from their homes or offices. But the focus was on the business market because it was a vehicular service and the notion of uh, insurance people. In fact, our first commercial customer was actually, uh, we had an insurance company being able to be on the road, communicating with their clients, communicating with their office, delivery people, uh, craft people, maintenance people. That was, you know, that was the initial focus of why this technology was built. And I'm, I believe that you have some sort of a, a prototype or something. The cell phone, <laughs> is this the cell phone that you worked on initially that was inside <clears throat> of a vehicle? Is that, oh my goodness, wow. that thing yeah. was fascinating. <clears throat> so, I love it. This, so how cell phones were in those days is that in the car, in the, you know, where people sat and drove the car, this would be mounted on, you know, on usually on the hump in the front of the car, uh, in the back, wired in the back to a transmitter device and with antennas on top. And, uh, and you could see quite, you know, large compared to what we even <laughs> see today. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but one of the concepts that came into developing this was the notion that you would put your number in first and then you would press this button called send then pick the handset up which wasn't how people use phones in those days was people would pick them up they get dial tone they mm -hmm. get dial and you know this concept you know think about this is how people make phone calls today came out of our, 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 our early planning Wow, that's so true. I honestly had not even thought of that, that yes, I if I'm going to make a call, I would type it in and then hit the green button to start the call right. versus just right. Dong, yes. and then yes. shuk, shuk, shuk. <laughs> right. that is, that's wow. Well, and, and especially the, to the time period that we're talking about here, um, like like you bring up a really good point. Like I remember in, in my home, you know, and, and, you know, I was born in the mid seventies. I remember having in our home a rotary dial mm -hmm. and not just a, a push button dial. So I have to imagine there were probably pr some prototypes of this thing that may have began with, you know, <laughs> in the realm of the rotary dial and, and yet, you know, kind of, kind of progressed from there. This is super fascinating. And then once it was, well, actually, let me let me take a step back. In order for this technology, like the actual hardware that you just showed off, to work, there has to be an underlying network for it to be supported on. How, like, what's what's uh, what's the development of that look like at a time? Because I think I, I think about the now, and I just think about the immense amount of cell towers that are required everywhere in order to support the network. Uh, you know, the the demand that we have now, which obviously is very uh, you know an insane amount higher than it was back then. What did that network technology look by look like forty years ago? So you know, so so think about the concept of cellular, uh, and we used to use an analogy that maybe today people don't relate to is that the original mobile telephone systems that existed had a had an antenna trans an antenna in the middle of the city it'd be broadcasting at high power whatever frequencies were used there could be used for miles away just like in tv back in those days mm -hmm. channel two could be used in san francisco could not be used until you got down to los angeles again the concept is cellular which comes from uh doug ring and and, and ray young in the 40s the concept came up was to take uh take the available spectrum, use low power, and reuse those channels multiple times within a given area. And that's where you get the huge capacity out of that. But for that to happen, and again, think about it, it was a vehicular service, as cars roamed around, drove, roamed, drove around the city, you'd have to be able to switch them from one channel to another channel, mm -hmm. a concept we called handoff. So what sat behind that network was uh, a switch, switching machine, uh, AT&T and Bell Labs were first for the electronic switching uh, and a network of cell towers or cell sites, as we call them, and the communication. And one of the things I got to work on as probably my second job was distributed architecture, the distributed architecture between a, a switch, between cell sites, between mobiles. And one of the things that came out of this was this is one of the first systems to ever use message based signaling. Uh, which was which was you know just a, a huge advance in those days, 
and and really made everything come together and work. On your team, uh, when you reached this milestone 40 years ago of the first cell call, cell phone call being made, like how how significant did that moment feel at the time? Like, obviously, I have to imagine you wouldn't in a million years have guessed kind of the way things have progressed over the last 40 years. But in that moment, did that feel as significant as maybe we would look back now and place significance on that now? Well, it was significant, but probably to us who worked on the system was probably even more significant was probably in the mid 70s, 1977, 78, when we were actually building and testing and trialing the Mm -hmm. system uh, in Chicago. And probably the most significant moment for me was actually going out there uh, and making the first call, picking up that handset I just showed you. And this is something we worked on for a number of years. And and it was just huge high about actually being able to call friends and call family using that system. And if you fast forward from there to 1983, the significance of that was that now there was the go ahead that we could start deploying this on a nationwide basis. So it was a big deal then uh, in that moment in time in October of 1983, but no one could have conceived what would happen going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those one of those kind of milestones where you realize, you know, telephone technology has been one thing for so many decades at that point. And then now this requirement of being tethered to a wall or a line coming out of a wall or something like that. That's yes. just that is the potential to not be there anymore. Here we are 40 years later cell phone technology, like I said earlier, I mean, we've all got them and, you know, we all take it for granted. Uh, Insane maturation over that time period. Only 40 years and we've gone from that to this. Yes. And not to mention the miniaturization aspect. I mean, I have a phone in the other room. It's, I mean, it's literally that small, you know, and that's kind of its, its claim to fame is that it's a tiny cell phone. But um, what have been some of the more kind of surprising developments, milestones, things that you've noticed about this technology as it's evolved over time that have really stood out for you to be like, man, that's, you know, I don't know that I ever saw that coming, but you know, it's just gotta be so cool that you helped create something that has had this much development and made such an impact. There are two aspects. One is the devices themselves. And as you mentioned, the miniaturization of, and, and think about the, you know, the first, portable cellular phones were this brick, which is heavy, uh, expensive, you know, not something you'd stick in your pocket. The evolution of that phone to something that you can pick up now and everyone sort of has to, uh, to the initial handheld phones to, you know, a significant moment that putting a camera in this device, yeah, think no about kidding. the big deal thing that happened with there. And I'd be remiss without mentioning the iPhone, which sure. which sort of set off this whole, you know, this whole notion of, you know, you know, of connectivity. But and to that connectivity word, the other thing was and, and people look at these devices, but but it's the network that sits behind it. Yeah. The evolution from one G to two G to five G, the ability to carry not just voice traffic, to go to digital voice, to carry data and now to carry video over that. Those are some of the things that I don't think we quite foresaw you know, back in the day when we started working on this. Well, yeah, indeed. And now, you know, through exactly what you're talking about, I mean, a combination of we've got the the hardware and we've got the hardware tapping into this very robust kind of data, wireless data network. Now we have the ability to do things that we probably, again, take largely for granted. That was pure science fiction, you know, video calls, like actually being able to see wirelessly on a screen and talk with someone with very, you know, ultra low latency over this wireless connection. I mean, that's just incredible what we've done, what you, I say we, as if I had any part in this, but what you have helped kick off here. Uh, um, and again, you never could have conceived that yeah. back back in the day. But, but and, and, you know, think about, you know, sort of where we're going you know, with this. And it actually buzzed in one other prop I have here. This yeah. was, and it's hard for you guys to see this, this was the Alexander Graham Patton. Oh, from wow, 1876, yeah. which sort of set this all off. Yeah. And while it was in those days and today, it's the whole connectivity. And so 
think about which what sits behind all these devices as they evolve. And the connectivity today, the seamless connectivity, whether it's from fiber in the ground, whether it's wireless, whether whether satellite, that really is a big deal that I think we see ahead of us because that empowers empowers everything that we do going forward. It's midweek, and you really want to know even more about the world of technology. So you should check out Tech News Weekly, the show where we talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news. It's the biggest news. We talk with the uh, people writing the stories that you're probably reading. We also talk between ourselves about the stories that are getting us even more excited about tech news this week. So if you're excited, well, then join us. Head to twit.tv slash TNW to subscribe. Subscribe.